Coming up on Radio Vision, social science teachers tell us more about the importance of discussing current events. And we take a look at the effects of sleep deprivation. I'm Jordan Bankson. And I'm Ali Santini. And, and this, this is Radio Vision. Current events are often discussed throughout the school. The recent U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan sparked discussion in several social science classes. I had a chance to sit down with several social science teachers to learn more. The recent events in Afghanistan surrounding the U.S. military withdrawal has prompted discussions in social science classes. The very nature of Afghanistan has factored in into our, global into our national politics and by extension our global politics for a period of time. And so all my students, every morning, I give them and I ask them to make sure they stay abreast of the, the news. Mm -hmm. So before class begins, every morning, for five minutes, we have to talk about different aspects of it, be it the policy or the execution of the policy. Teachers feel that coverage of these events can help promote more personal connections to them. I love that Dr. Daniel expects us to follow the news and know what's happening in the world with issues like Afghanistan. It's really important for all of us to be aware about world issues and be able to talk about them. Discussing the issues can help promote a sense of empathy among the student body. And I think the more you know about something, the more you internalize it and care. And I think we definitely have students here at Gulliver that always show empathy and, you know, really care about issues that affect other human beings. According to Mena and other teachers, creating a sense of empathy is important, especially in terms of events outside of our local community. If it doesn't directly impact you, you tend not to care that much because you don't see the carnage of people dying around you. You don't see um, people coming back in body bags and you don't attend the funerals and all of that. In some instances, personal experience can offer a different perspective. This is true for U.S. Air Force veteran and world history teacher, Dr. Jacqueline Grant, who discussed her feelings about the U.S. military's recent withdrawal from Afghanistan. I have like a kind of anxiety that makes me wonder how do we forestall this again yeah. in the future? Because you had asked me a question earlier which I didn't have an answer. How do I avoid this? How do we avoid this in the future? Since we don't really have an answer to that, there is an air of anxiety, even though we're not involved, you know, yes. physically involved anymore. Taking the time to learn and discuss these topics could lead to deeper communication and understanding. And hopefully, you know, whether it's the students or it's, you know, the population wants to watch the news, you go home and find out more information, even speak to friends, family, or people you know that are from those, those areas, those countries, and you try to also get their perspective. Reporting for Radio Vision, I'm Amelie Santini. September 28th marked the celebration of Ask a Stupid Question Day. Reporter Julia Piquette tells us more with this week's Julia on Campus. People say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but on September 28th, it's a different story. Let's see how some people react to our weird questions. How do you know when you run out of invisible ink? Um, probably when like the little light at the end, like when you do when you use no, it. If, like, no, no, no. So basically, when there's a big frog and it walks over, the slime on a frog is supposed to like show you the invisible ink at the right time. <laughs> That's really great. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. <laughs> can you can you tune a fish? Can you can you tune a fish? <laughs> can you tune a fish? Can I tune a fish? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what tuning a fish is, but I am quite a fisherman myself, so I, I might be able to do it. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Why do we say an alarm clock goes off when it turns on? Because you go to sleep after turning it off, right? You go to sleep after you're turning out, like, how do you go to school? You just go. It's just a, it's a feeling that's, it's a feeling. Nice. Can you tune a fish? <laughs> Can you tune a fish? No, no, no. Can you tune a fish? Can you tune a fish? Can you tune a fish? Please answer. Hello? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Can I ask you a stupid question? Ask away. Why is the sky blue? Because it's beautiful and it's blue, and it's a great color. But if you could give me uh, a reason, just like a, it doesn't have to be scientific, just like anything. Anything? Um, 
it's something that gives you hope. The color is very bright and it gives you hope. There's something at the end and we're going to find it soon or later, but there is something. So we have to enjoy that. That was so deep. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you all next time. This is Julia from Julia on Campus. Sleep deprivation is a problem many face, especially when starting a new school year. I know it's been tough for me to wake up in the morning. That's right, Amelie, and you're not alone. Reporter Desmond Howard spoke with some students, and here's what they had to say. That blurring sound can be a rude awakening to many students, especially within the first week of school. After a long summer sleeping in, adjusting to a new sleep schedule can be difficult, particularly when balancing academic responsibilities and extracurricular activities. Students should be getting about nine hours of sleep per night. However, studies conducted by the CDC show that only 73% of teenagers are reaching this threshold. Lack of sleep can lead to several issues. With teenagers, uh, probably the biggest thing that I see as far as students are cognitive abilities. The um, lack of being able to take tests properly, being able to do homework properly, even potentially staying awake in classes. We see a lot of mood swings, uh, a lot of you know ups and downs where you know you're just don't want to do anything. You're apathetic. As far as sleep deprivation, it also is increases the likelihood of injury or accidents, like car accidents, if if the kids are driving. Despite the mounting evidence of health effects, students still have after-school obligations that often limit their quality of sleep. Well, I play a couple sports, and so I get home late every day. And then when I get home late, I have to do my homework, and I have to make up for whatever I missed in class uh, for early dismissal or whatever. And so that kind of makes it more difficult to go to bed at a reasonable time. But on days where that doesn't happen, I usually get some sleep. So it just depends on the day and depends on what I have to do. Luckily, there are a variety of tips to get students back on the right track. Since I am the health teacher, probably the biggest tip that I would say is to find ways to stay healthy, which include diet and proper exercise. So making sure you're getting at least 20 to 30 minutes of activity minimum. Teenagers should be getting about 60 minutes most days of the week. What that does is it allows you to stay in the non-REM sleep for a longer period of time, which is the deep sleep where all the growth and repair of the body tissues takes place. So diet and exercise hands down are probably two of the biggest. The other thing which I try to tell my students is make sure you're setting routines. So you're setting a routine of when you're going to bed and when you're waking up and try and stay consistent with that routine and you'll notice you'll actually be a little bit better off. Please ensure to utilize these tips on a daily basis for a well-rested school year. For Radio Vision, I'm Desmond Howard. Thanks for the tips, Desmond. Now to Julia with the weather. Thanks, Jordan. This week we'll see mostly cloudy skies and scattered rain. The temperatures throughout the week will stay in the high 80s. Today through Friday, the winds are out of the east at 10 to 50 miles per hour. The chance of rain for the week starts at 20% today and increases to 35% by Friday. Going into the weekend, we'll see scattered thunderstorms and the winds in the east continuing at 10 to 50 miles per hour. Chances of rain increases to 40% both days. Now here's Jonah with the sports. Thanks, Julia. The boys and girls bowling team had a two separate matches last week. The boys suffered a loss to Belen on Tuesday, 0-7. Junior Conor and Kempar bowled a 142 game high and a 397 series. The boys also fell short to Krupp on Thursday. Freshman Aaron Gold bowled a 150 game high and a 348 series. The girls also lost to Krupp 0-7. Freshman Matilde Barrera bowled a 86 game high and a 238 series. Both teams are looking to recover and get ready to face Archbishop McCarthy on Wednesday at Bird Bowl. The varsity golf team had dual matches against Doral and Westminster Christian. They dropped the match to Doral 176 to 161. John Marshall was the low man with 35. They took the win over the Westminster Warriors 162 to 177, along with a nice performance from sophomore Eli Pareski. The team will be looking to get ready for the next match against Archbishop McCarthy in Grand Palms. The girls varsity volleyball team honored Paola Avazian, Kate Perez, and Carolina Perez in the senior game Thursday night in the prep gym. Unfortunately, they lost to Nova Southeastern University School 26-28, 21-25, and 12-25. The teams play away at Florida Christian tomorrow with JV starting at 6 and varsity at 7.30. The homecoming game was a huge success with the varsity football team's monstrous 52-27 win against the Champagnat Lions. Quarterback Carson Haggard led the charge with 325 passing yards and two TDs. Junior running back Cedric Irvin pitched in with three rushing and one receiving TD. Junior Jalen Brown and, pa and senior Patrick Atkins also contributed one CD each. 
Irvin says the win was gotten with the help of the offensive line. That's it for sports, and back to Jordan at the desk. Thanks, Jonah. And now, Raiders, here are the top five things you need to know for this week. Throughout the week, colleges will be visiting the campus. Check your emails for instructions on how to sign up. We are fortunate to have, uh, most years, anywhere from 100 to 150 colleges and universities visit our campus. Um, traditionally, it's been in person, and they'll come and they'll present to our kids, and we can learn a little bit about the, you know, the happenings on their campus and uh, their offerings and their admission process, and then our kids get a chance to ask questions, meet the admissions reps who read their applications. Super awesome opportunity, right, for us. Uh, since COVID, uh, there's been a split. Some are still doing virtual sessions. Some are still coming in person. We're making all those available. Seniors are generally sitting with colleges they know they're applying to or are still thinking about applying to. We've opened it to juniors to be able to start to explore a little bit and get a sense of uh, some of the colleges and universities out there while it's still very early for them to even know what they want. Um, so a good opportunity for our kids just part of you know one of the many uh, ways we try to connect our kids to the outside world. There will be a hip orientation tomorrow for juniors and seniors in a library from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Robotics will be traveling to Tampa this weekend to perform in the first robotic competition. We wish the Raiders the best of luck. The gym is off limits during lunch. Students are not allowed to eat or play inside during those times. Anyone found in the gym during lunch will be reprimanded. It's important to make sure that students aren't in the gym during lunch because the gym is closed. It's closed for good reason, to, uh, for the safety and well-being of each student. Uh, and then also to make sure that there, we manage the messes that are left behind. Uh, moving forward, the, door, the, the doors have signs on them that need to be followed. Uh, those students who are found in the gym playing during lunch will be uh, their names will be taken and there will be some consequences later later on. Uh, so for all good reason, just stay out of the gym during lunch. The Miller Drive campus will break out their bingo cards in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. All classes are invited to play this Thursday during first period. Prizes will be awarded to all winners. Thanks for joining us this week. If you have anything to share with us or want something to be featured, please email us at raydivision at gulliverprep.org. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.